the third and I think final Guardians of the Galaxy. Is it? Is it final? I don't know. I, I doubt, doubt it. Doesn't matter. Do you Probably doubt? Not. I doubt it. I doubt it. It's Marvel. Everybody. Do people die in it? Who? Who? Either way, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is out now, once again directed by James Gunn, and the film looks unique, colorful, and a mix of retro and modern. There are several very different atmospheres in Guardians of the Galaxy, sometimes very warm, sometimes very colorful, then other times colder and desaturated. Today, we are going to take one clip and try to create both of those atmospheres using DaVinci Resolve. So we have this clip here, which again, we got off Artlist. This one was shot with the Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro. It has a science fiction vibe, so it's a good base basis to work from. In this example, we're gonna work in Rec 709, Gamma 2. Get wrecked, 709. <laughs> in this example, we're gonna be working with Rec 709, Gamma 2.4 to simplify it. As seen in previous episodes, we could have used the DaVinci Wide Gamut Space or even in ACES as we will see in future episodes. Let's start by putting some serial nodes. First, a node for noise reduction with just 5% chroma noise reduction. A second node to make some primary corrections and adequately balance the image. A node to adjust contrast and exposure. And finally, a node to convert our log image to our destination color space. Rec 709. We're going to be using the Film Convert plugin here, which will allow us to convert our image to Rec 709 and give us a basic look that we'll use as a starting point. So in camera settings, I choose Blackmagic Design, then the Ursa Mini Pro model, and finally the Film 4.6K V4 profile. And here is our image converted to Rec 709. It's important to keep this conversion at the end of our node tree as we always do in order to work on the log image and not the image converted to Rec 709. So we put it at the end so everything that comes before is adjusting that initial log image with more data. We could also apply this node directly to the timeline rather than to the clip. In Film Convert, I'm gonna zero the grain because we don't need it here and I'll leave everything else as is. Film Convert is also today's sponsor and easily one of my favorite apps that I've used for the last seven years, which I know I say all the time, but it's true. Nine times out of 10, I'll drop this on the end of my image chain just to take it the rest of the way and get that filmic sort of sense for my visual. When you place it on, you get a look right off the bat, but you can also refine or completely finish your image right here. You can, of course, add more or less grain, adjust the grain size, or soften the image a bit. And I love that soften function. It just takes a little bit of that harsh digital sharpened edge off. Then you have this curve here that will allow us to get more specific on where we want the grain more or less heavy, and several film stocks to choose from that give you all kinds of different looks, including some of my favorite black and white looks. You also have different grain options from 8mm to 16 up to 35 millimeter full frame. And down here, you can dig in more and adjust the chroma and luma amounts or jump down further and get into the color with their color wheels, curves, or levels. It really is an excellent plugin that helps you get to a great place very quickly. So definitely give it a shot in the link below. But moving on, we're gonna start by adjusting contrast and exposure with the RGB curve like this. Move forward in the clip to find the darkest scene and ensure that we're not pushing the shadows too much. Now add a new node and use the color compressor. This tool allows you to select a color with the eyedropper and then bring the entire image closer to that color. For example, when we choose the orange of the suit, when you increase the compressed hue, you see that the whole image pulls towards this orange. You could do the same with saturation and luminance. But we'll use the color compressor here to soften and even out the luminance and saturation of the image. So first select a mid-tone, then increase compressed saturation to around 25% and compress luminance to about 30%. You could see in the before and after that our image is now more homogenous. Now on our balance node, we will warm up the image a bit. With the white balance, increase the temperature around 200 and the hue around 5 for now. Then lower the saturation by 5% and increase the color boost by 5%. Color boost is a bit like vibrance in photo editing software like Lightroom or Photoshop. To get closer to the very orange atmosphere that we want, use the color warper on two parallel nodes. On the first, increase the cyan in the shadows. This is something that you'll find often in Hollywood films and is made fun of often. It works well though because it complements the orangish and reddish skin tones. In chroma luma mode, set the axis to minus 25 and slightly pull the green in the lowlights. On the second parallel node, we'll do the opposite. Set the axis to about minus 52 and increase the orange in the shadows and midtones. Now go back to the balance node and continue warming up the image with the color wheels gamma. The effect will be increased tenfold by the two parallel nodes we have just created, so you'll want to be very careful here. So move the gamma slightly into the yellow oranges, no more than 
that. It's pretty good already. We are very warm in terms of skin tone, like in the movie, but overall we're lacking contrast. So readjust the RGB curve quickly and then slightly increase the contrast of the balanced node, just like that. Now we'll add a node for secondary fixes specific to the shot. For example, reducing the saturation of the orange suit with the hue versus sat curve, we can do this easily. And in this scene, you'll notice that around the image, there is some separation of the RGB layers. This is called RGB splitting or RGB shifting. And it gives a dreamy sort of look to the scene. And we can create that pretty easily in Resolve. For this, add a splitter combiner node. These three parallel nodes correspond to a red, green, and blue layer. We'll wanna limit the effect only to the edges of the image. So we'll create a mask, then add a parallel node above like this. Now position a power window in inverted mode and link this mask to the RGB nodes like that. To shift the RGB layers, go to the sizing tab in node sizing mode and play with pan, tilt, or zoom. Here, we're gonna be using zoom. And for each color, very subtly create a shift and there you go. To finalize the look, add some texture pop effect on a node after the Rec. 709 conversion. So just after film convert and adjust the effect like this. Finally, add a little vignetting to focus on the center of the image. To do that, add one last node, place a power window in the center and reverse it. Now with the RGB curve, reduce the brightness. And to accentuate that sort of dreamy effect, we'll add a little blur in the vignetting. In the blur tab, increase the radius to around 0.7. For a second look, we are again using that same clip, but this time we're gonna try to recreate this look much colder and less saturated. We'll start from scratch here, but we'll put the same first nodes, a node for noise reduction, a node for the balance, a node for exposure, a node for color compressor, and finally a node for film convert. We'll start with film convert as before, select the camera and set the grain to zero, select a mid-tone and compress the luminance and saturation slightly. On the balance node, adjust the white balance just like this and reduce the saturation by about 5%. Then as before, increase the color boost a little bit. So we're staying on something neutral for now and we'll refine it later. On our next node, adjust the exposure with the RGB curve, making sure not to crush the shadows by monitoring the RGB parade. Then we'll just need to add a bit of that bluish tint in there. So add a new node and with the color warper, move the central point towards blue like this. And because there is a bit of magenta in the look of the film, in chroma luma mode, intensify the blue and orange in the shadows with the same technique we showed before. It's not bad there, there is a little bit of difference in the highlights. We can see the LED light, which is a bit purple, while in the scene, the light sources are somewhat bluish. So add a node and with the HDR color wheels, we'll make the correction. The light wheels allow us to adjust the halo created by the light source here. So move the point down to the cyans and then with the highlight wheel, do the same. It is subtle, but it makes a big difference. Finally, we'll correct the skin tones. They are a bit too pink in our example. So add two parallel nodes and on the first one, use a power window to isolate the face and limit the corrected area, then start tracking the mask. Now on the node below, link the previously created mask, then with the hue versus hue curve, change the skin color like this. And we have our before and after. Give it up, give it up to me, baby. And that's it, our two looks. As always, links to everything we talked about in the notes below, including links to some great LUTs by our colorist friend, Benjamin, who helps us bring all these color grading episodes to you. We have our own LUTs as well, which were also created by Benjamin. You can see those right below this video. We'll add some of our favorites there for you to check out. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat.